Why it and you gapa? Mamba, I put as you put them to a way. Yes. Ogusia Maru Tora and I am married, never read Rubo Gawi. By this money, my husband must come in Jesus' name. There is no such a free will offering. Yes. You don't give offerings that way. <laughs> Those are acts of divination. Yes. That is so sorry. Yes. You don't speak to money. So if you give that money which you have spoken to, and the pastor takes that man to the supermarket. What happens to the speech you made to that man? Does the supermarket cashiers know that this man, he made incantations on this man? <laughs> the pastor will say to his wife, go and buy me bread in this morning. I want to have breakfast. The pastor doesn't know that you prayed for that man. Do you think the okay people or the TM supermarket people who care about your stupid prayer? Those are not free will offerings. Yes. Those are acts of divination. That is so sad. Yes. Uroi wa wakangu ushito itisikuwa wea wakuti taurani mari yako kuti mari yangu msaende makanyarara varewese nga wafe. Neka fifty dollars hika. Kano ura ya muro hika. Yes. First Kings 10, 6 to 8. And she said to the king, It is a true report that I have heard in my own land of thy acts and of thy wisdom. Howbeit, I believed not the words until I came. Yes. And mine ears, mine eyes have seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceeded the fame which I had. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Happy are thy men. Happy are these thy servants. Yes. You remember the book of Peter, which he said we are servants of God. Yes. Everyone is a servant of God. Yes. And if you are in the kingdom, you are supposed to be a happy servant. What makes you happy is your is not your financial situation. Yes. Not your marital situation. Not your career situation. It is your salvation situation. I am happy. I am forgiven of my sins. I am happy Jesus died on the cross for me to obtain salvation. I am happy God did not withhold his Holy Spirit from me. I am happy I have been made a son of God. Yes. I am happy I have been given a promise that is incorruptible through Christ. So you are always happy. Marriage or no marriage, that happiness cannot be taken away from you. Because of his happiness in Christ, it doesn't matter you have money or you don't have money. Money cannot take away your happiness. Yes. That's the true salvation. That's the kingdom for you. So, I want Pastor Baloy to read 2 Corinthians 9 7 for the last time. Yes. And I want you to read Malachi chapter 1. We want to talk about it a little bit in respect of animals that are torn by the beast yes. because that's what Apostle Paul was talking about when he mentioned the word grudging yes. <laughs> yes. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart. Yes. So let him give. Yes. Not grudgingly or of necessity. Yes. For God loveth a cheerful giver. Malachi 1, 7 and 8. You offer polluted bread upon mine altar. Yes. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, who will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts. Mm -hmm. Verse 13 and 14. You said also, Behold, what a weariness is it, and you have snuffed at it, said the Lord of hosts, and you brought that which was torn, and the lamb, and the sick. Thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, said the Lord. Okay, let's end there. So he says, You can't offer. A sacrifice of an animal that is torn, yes. that is lame, or that is sick. Yes. Listen to me carefully. 
I hope you never forget this message. Even the governor does not accept a torn and a lame animal. Yes. That's why when we looked at it in the book of Exodus, we saw that whatever was torn by the beasts, God instructed Israel to cast it to the dogs. Yes. What scripture was that? Chapter 22 from verse 29 to Chapter 22, one. verse 29, verse 31. Yes. yes. Uh, thou shalt not delay to offer the first of thy ripe fruits yes. and of thy liquors. The firstborn of thy sons shalt thou give unto me. Yes. Likewise shalt thou do with thine oxen yes. and with thy sheep seven days. It shall be with his dam. On the eighth day thou shalt give it me. And you shall be holy men unto me. Yes. Neither shall you eat any flesh that is torn of beasts in the field. Ye shall cast it to the dogs. Yes. So brethren, I want you to focus here. Because we are not going to talk about this for any long. Think about it. In Malachi chapter 1, he says, even the governor does not accept an offering of an animal that is sick, blind, lame, or torn with beasts. Look at me. Have you ever thought about it? Why God, in one of the Moriah mountains, gave Abraham a ram that is the male of a sheep to replace Isaac on the altar yes. in the mountain. What was easy for God to give Abraham between a sheep which is a domesticated animal or a deer or a hat or a roe or an antelope or a bushbuck or a diker, or a bison, or a wood beast. There are so many animals in the forest from which God could have given Abraham as an animal for a sacrifice. Why a domesticated animal? Again, our nation. Mwarakata zane kukupa Abraham membre kanabima kananoro Kana mara, kana mara para. Mm -hmm. Aka pire Abrahama, gondo bwe mugomo musango, mukaze musango, zaka wandisa, zino kuna kubayi wa. Abrahama akatubaya, buru, remembre, mwara akatutijaita, mwara waka pire imunu, mukai kumba, iye munaru kusango. The answer is, the answer is, if you look at Isaiah 53, Jesus was described as a lamb that is in the hands of his shearer. Yes. There is no resistance from the sheep. Yes. A sheep can actually walk to the slaughterhouse. It can walk to the abattoir without any resistance. The animals of the wilderness, they are good at evading danger. Yes. They don't want danger at any cost. Yes. Verse now, seven. verse 7 says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yes. yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb. Yes. So he opened not his mouth. So the idea of a lamb, I hope you are looking at me. It is about submission. Yes. It is about consent. Yes. The moment Isaac said to his father, where is the sacrifice? God noticed that there is no consensus from the offering to the offer. Yes. In other words, Isaac was offered by Abraham by compulsion. 
That is why God rejected Isaac. Yes. The reason why Jesus spoke many times, Matthew chapter 12, 38, Matthew chapter 16, 21 to 22, John chapter 2, 18 to 21, he continued to prophesy of his death. I shall go to Jerusalem. They shall take me. They shall beat me up. They shall kill me. I will rise up. He yes. was consenting to his death. Yes. But at the climax of his consent, at the climax of his submission to the altar of sacrifice, the Mizbak Hachizona, is John 10, 17. In John 10, 17, he brought out irrefutable proof. I am going to die of my own volition. Yes. It is not by compulsion. Yes. I came to die and so I will die. Yes. Therefore, Therefore doth my father love me. Read. Therefore doth my father love me. Yes. Because I lay down my life that I may take it again. Yes. No man taketh it from me. No one will take my life from me. But I lay it down of myself. I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. No one will kill me. Yes. I lay down my life by myself. <laughs> I have power to submit <clears throat> myself to death. I have power to take it again. Yes. It's a commandment which I received from my Father, which means God actually told him, you cannot die by compulsion. Yes. You may not be taken out to the cross by force. You have to submit yourself to the cross. Yes. That's where when he died, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And the Bible said he bowed down and gave up the ghost. So 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7 is actually telling us that the reason why God spoke in Exodus 22, <coughs> verse 31, those animals that are torn by the beasts, it is a sign that they were trying to escape. Okay? Yes. Assuming that this is a probably an eland or it is a buffalo, it is beaten up by a predator. It's a lion or a leopard. It's beaten up like this. And then because of resistance, the buffalo slips out of the jaws of the lion. But it goes away with a wound. And that wound develops a gun green and then the buffalo dies. You cannot offer a wounded or a torn buffalo as a sacrifice. Neither was Israel allowed to eat it. Exodus 22 says, Do not eat any flesh that is torn off the beast in the field. Cast it to the dogs. So we have people who are trying to offer, but the beast is the pastor who is biting them, and that's why they are giving. Their offerings represent flesh of those animals that are torn with the beast. They are giving by compulsion. The Bible says, even governors do not receive such offerings. Yes. Will I accept such an offering? Saruman Ajikar. Yes. Sirutaka Zanzi Murimba, Vamuno Biramar. Zabai was a Kuara Zuba Zanzi, Chisaimari basket. Israel I told the Pai Mugazi, in Bugataka the Tower, Muswe, Revolution of Gathering, to go out in Bugava Paris Venema, no Sagavachi Gazao, Dava Gara Vacanzi, Zinga Zagarum as you can, Ipai Muga, Zigojiga. 
So when you are offering to God, make sure yourself, you are not torn with this. Yes. Whatever comes from you, it represents meat from those animals that are torn by the beast of the field. It has to be cast to the dogs. God will not accept it. You should not be bleeding in your heart when you give. There should never be any form of compulsion, implicit or explicit. It doesn't matter. Yes. You have to be whole yourself. Yes. You have to be whole. There should never be any wound in you. I find you going a ronda maul. Ukafunga uti ndaka mbiri wamari yangu na guti. Ushida wisa offering mo offering basket. Chitorega. Yes. Ironda iro. Yes. Waranga ra ronda rako rawaka kuba zwana guti. Saka ucha bumiz go gisa offering basket. Because inyama yet zakaru manajika. Yes. Ha magayaga mantura mani yangu. Shinesh kwa kuz gurdu wa mari kuchech do visa yere. Uda wutu uchi paso. O vota nsa maronda ako. Kana waka daro. Imbo mira. The gospel should heal you until you are healed. Yes. Then you can give. Wait until you are. The gospel will heal the broken hearted. Yes. Now we want to talk about instruction giving. But before I do that, I want to emphasize something. The king is not an ordinary person. Yes. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. The king is not just given anything anyhow. There is a specific method by which people give yes. kings. Seven days shalt thou keep a solemn feast unto the Lord thy God yes. in the place which the Lord shall choose. Yes. Because the Lord thy God shall bless thee in all thine increase, yes. and in all the works of thine hands. Yes. Therefore thou shalt surely rejoice. You <coughs> shall surely rejoice. Three times in a year shalt all thy males appear before the Lord thy God, yes. in the place which he shall choose, in the feast of unleavened bread, and in the feast of weeks, and in the feast of tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Oh. Munoza pasta matawarira anetu kwa namuare. Aka uma. Yes. Aneta kunga haruta wala pa msolo pe mwe lord asiri. Anzi muno api yaka tatu pa gore. Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the lord thy God in the place which he shall use. Yes. So I know we have talked about the holy convocations, we talked about Chagamazot, yes. we talked about Shavot, and we also talked about Sukkot. Those are the three times that Israel appeared before the Lord. They are the three holy convocations of Israel. Yes. So each time they gathered, at what we can say today is basically a conference. Mm -hmm. They could not appear before the Lord empty. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. Let us look at Exodus chapter 23, verse 14. Yes. And 15. Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Yes. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread. That's Chagamazot. Yes. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month Abib, for in it thou camest out from Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. And of course he talked about the Feast of Harvest, yes. and he also talked about the Feast of Tabernacles. But we see that the emphasis is appearing. Yes. Because remember we said free will offerings are throne room offerings. Yes. When you are giving offerings, you are appearing before the Lord. So that's why when you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 16, yes. the apostle gave an order that
that every first day of the week, yes. they had to give free will offerings. Yes. The order was not to instruct them to give what, but it was an order for them to make sure that what other churches are doing, yes. they also were doing the same. Because the church used it to gather every first day of the week. And in verse 2, he actually mentions it. Yes. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store, as God did prospered him, that there be no gatherings when I come. Yes. So the first day of the week is that which we are now calling Sunday. So Sunday is the first day of the week. Yes. The first day of the week, they were going to lay by him in store as God did the prospered him. Yes. They were not going to choose to be given an instruction as to how much they were going to lay in store. The issue of giving free will offerings is the issue of appreciating the throne. Yes. You are appreciating and you are demonstrating your submission to the word of God, which teaches that Jesus is the king. Jaari Mambo Jesu Christu. Jinori wakuti mamba wano fanyala kukudzwa. Wano wano gona yale kukudza mambo watina. Ah, nyeti na yaga simba posto inuda. I think the Lord is going to help us to apply this understanding in our in our offering to God and also in the manner by which we we should understand the conduct that we are supposed to have as believers. Yeah, sometimes we just take it casual. Uh, especially from the hangover, from these other <coughs> teachings that we have been receiving from from these shrines, it actually maimed us so that at the moment we can see for all, we can safely say this message is coming to to do a, a restructuring a, program a kind of a installation of a, of a new system and removing the old system that used to operate saga eh pashine bas basaraka kura ripo basari ripo rakakura tangati chizvidza kristu but not in our words to say kristu ndokuzvidza but the the manner by which we are giving we actually treating Christ as a as a beggar, someone who who is not even on the throne, and uh, someone who has got shortages and a lot of um, shortcomings. But that is not the case when it comes to our Lord. Mm. So, a gift that is going to the king is obviously different from a gift that is given to a friend. Yes. A colleague, a workmate, or probably a gift to your spouse on your wedding anniversary. In Israel, I want you to listen to this, brethren. In Israel, the standards of measurement differed. Yes. In context. Let us talk about the measures of weight which were usually in talents or shekels in some points. Or a measure of length which was in cubits. If we are going to say we want to buy a kilogram of beef we had to make sure we talk to the butcherman where we want to take 
that kilogram means. There was a marketplace kilogram. There was a royal house kilogram. And then there was a holy temple kilogram. The archaeologists and the historians and the scholars, they have different uh, estimates and different discoveries. But to bring warm the picture that is given by the variables they found, we could say a kilogram today could be the kilogram which they could be saying this is the marketplace measurement. But if you are bringing a kilogram of beef to the palace of the king, the marketplace kilogram should be twice so for it to become equivalent to the royal house, the royal palace kilogram. Yes. But the highest measurement was the uh, bait hamikdash kilogram, yes. which was two and a half times the marketplace instrument or the marketplace measurement. Yes. So if you are buying a kilogram of beef for your own consumption, it would be an ordinary kilogram. But if you want to give the president, the king, a kilogram of beef, you would have to tell the butcher man, I want a kilogram of beef to take to the royal house. Yes. And he was going to charge you twice the money he was charging you for your own kilogram because he was going to give you two kilograms. That is the kilogram in the royal palace. But if you tell the butcher man, I want to take a kilogram of meat to the temple, the holy temple. He would tell you, you are going to get two and a half kilograms of beef to take to the holy temple. Yes. At the royal temple, it will be a kilogram. A kilogram at the holy temple was two and a half times a marketplace kilogram. Mm -hmm. A royal palace kilogram was twice the marketplace kilogram. Yes. They always gave the best to the king, but yes. the best of the best to God. Yes. Now, we are talking about Jesus as a king. Yes. He is not a Solomon palace kind of a king. Yes. He is a holy temple king, which means the measurement that we must use when we give to Jesus Yes. It's not a Solomon Palace measurement. Yes. It is a beta Mikdash measurement. Murgona Zadu Tawa. Yes. So good is a Zizi, I am a Zwa Tru Tawa. Tikati is a Zizi, Tiruda to an Vapema dollar. Dollar every church, like I see other than a dollar in supermarket. Yes. In Gada, I did two and a half dollars. Do my shandy, I eat my measurements, name of variables in the days of the. Uh, old Bible times. Yes. But the question is, what is the relevance of that? The answer is Leviticus chapter 3, verse 1 to 16. But let's not read the whole chapter. Yes. Let's read it from verse 10. And the two kidneys, he's talking about oblation sacrifices, yes. uh, peace offerings, and, and burnt offerings. And the two kidneys. And the fat that is upon them, which is by the flanks, and the cow above the liver, yes. with the kidneys, it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn it upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire unto the Lord. Yes. And if his offering be a god, then he shall offer it before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the head of it, and kill it before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the sons of Aaron shall sprinkle the blood thereof upon the altar round about. And he shall offer thereof his offering, even an offering made by fire unto the Lord, the fate that covereth the inwards, and all the fate that is upon the inwards. Yes. And the two kidneys, and the fate that is upon them, which is the flanks and the cow above the liver, with the kidneys, it shall he take away, yes. and the priest shall bend them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering 
made by fire for a sweet savor. I like the last part. All the fate is the Lord's news. <laughs> The fact is, what offended God and he killed Phineas and Ophni, <laughs> they started eating the fat. Yes. The fat, Pastor Baloy, no one, even Aaron, could not eat the fat. Whatever animal that is brought as a sacrifice to God, there were portions of those animals which the priest was allowed to eat. But all the fat was the Lord's. Mavuta yes. All the faith belongs to the Lord. Yes. Mavuta is. You know, to blaspheme your daughter. Mafuta is. What we learn from this scripture, brethren, is that. When we give our best, we must give our best towards the free will offerings than in the instruction offerings. Because we will be pushing ourselves because of our love for the king. We give our best. Now, I want to remind you, uh, I, I want us to read verse 16 again. Yes. I want us to read verse 16 again. And I want to show you something that a lot of people do not understand. Yes. And the priest shall... Yes. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar. It is the food of the offering made by fire for a sweet savor. All the fat is the Lord's. All the fat is the Lord's. Mafta is saying that she. Yes. Kabala mo kau katinda ku ipaku na mungar. Ausi sina kara vuta ni meche tira uchabat. Ese mafuta nda mungar. Mafuta is a dan jo. Nda mungar. So the Queen of Sheba, which is our case study, the Scripture surrenders. The scripture salutes a manner of giving. Yes. The Bible says in verse 10, it's verse 10 of chapter 10. Yes. And she gave the king in hundred and twenty talents of gold and of spices, very great store yes. and the precious stones. There came no more such abundance of spices yes. as these which the queen of Sheba gave. King Solomon. Yes. Now, there is nobody who surpassed the queen's manner of giving. And she did not give to Solomon. She gave it to King Solomon. Yes. Which means she gave it to the throne. These are throne offerings that she gave. Yes. And a lot of people misconstrue the widow in Luke 21. They don't understand why Jesus commanded her. Yes. And he looked up and saw the rich men casting their gifts into the treasury. Yes. And he saw also a certain poor widow casting in thither two mites, yes. two coins. And he said, Of a truth I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast in more than they owe. Yes. For all these have of their abundance cast in unto the offering, offerings of God. Yes. But she of a penary hath cast in all the living that she had. Yes. So I think a lot of people try to spiritualize and, and, and over spiritualize Luke 21, 1 to 4. <laughs> but the truth of the matter, Jesus was not talking about a state of art at the time of giving yes. only. He actually emphasized what was given. Yes. He was concerned about the how much part. 
And don't try to put words into my mouth. I know what I want to talk about. Yes. The Lord said, everyone here in this church is giving from their abundance. But this woman, she cast in all the living that she had. What it means is, Jesus was not moved by the how much that people are giving. Jesus was moved by how much it means to the giver. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pastor. Yeah, I got it. Jesus was kubat kwa nekuti yaka wandaere kana kuti ishoma kana taka tarisa ya wapayashu. Jesus was kubat kwa nekuti ino relei kwa uri ya wavisa. So people who had more money on this day, they comfortably gave. First, do you know that there are people who give after looking at us first? They are going to say, how much can I give? Let me look at the level of the pastor. If he drives an expensive car, we'll give him more money. If he looks broke, who give him something to make him feel comfortable. But remember, we said free will offerings. They are offerings to the one sitting on the throne. Yes. You don't look at the treasurer. You don't even know his name. The name of the treasurer is not there. Yes. What is there is the name of the Queen of Sheba and Solomon, who was sitting on the throne. You are not concerned. When you give free will offerings, you are supposed to be looking at Jesus who sits on the throne. We are servants of the palace. Yes. Now there is this aspect of people asking, okay, we want to give, but how do we know that this money is going to be used accountably? I've heard people asking that question. We give our money, but we want to know how that money is used. First of all, if you followed this message, you should not even know how this man is used. So your question is not important. It doesn't deserve an answer. You can go to Maria and Dinopa, you know it is quay. It's not a free will offering. You are now sponsoring. You are a donor. A donor has a right to receive a financial statement. He has to know what his money has been used for. If you ask for a donation, for a specific cause and use that money for a different cause, you will be arrested for misappropriation of funds. It's a crime. Yes. But you can't make a donation to God. Are you getting this? Yes. So the question is coming from people who don't even understand what giving is. But to just expand their understanding, I could say to them, if you say that there are thieves stealing money in the church, you are also accusing the king of being incompetent. How could we hire thieves as treasurers? Okay, I'm going to put the king to the king Yes. In other words, Judas Kovana Joanna Navana, Juna Susanna Vacazins, go to Marizavo, Zavaca Pacuna Jeso, Tai Juana Judas, Lano Gumbuca Ere, Cuneva Singa Zema Guarach, Ilu eight, one to three, Ne John twelve, or one Kushka by nine, Inota or Judas Ibama, Sagatine Mucherichet, Wimba, Faya Kanga, Chegeta Maria Chet, Ichiba, Mufuzo, Dokut, Laite Rajeso, Vachum Pamar, Lano Gone, Kuya Kuna Jeso. Vashiti, Susa, Atis Kufara, Takanzi kwa kuti Judas, haru kubamari za tino visa. <laughs> kubamari kwa hiti kwa na Judas, kwa kafambisa vangeni, 
Ndoko yes. kasaka Judas, atenge se jesu, yes. jesu achi zoroverwa. It's part of the mission of the gospel. Yes. Iwewe basarako, arisite kumega short, mario, yasha andaswa ganaka. Basarako, <coughs> jene kukwe ya nishipo kuna maa. <laughs> so kutu kushanda swa ganaka, ine mpege ya iti sikuwe, jesu andu kutu. Iko kutu mbama riko kuka, kwa kaitu kuna Judas. Yes. Ndoko kushanda basarako yu jeko jene. Yaka shata sikete mario yu. Yaka ita kuti Judas hako ni tengesa. Yes. Yono kwa jifungo titaya tengesa, chikafu, chapua warumbo, unonzi waa kutifutu warumbo, mcha garamu inawo. Sia hizi wakata haro zinu kabisa. Yes. Ha? Ah. <laughs> Tinema donors, aliku funzo timarini kufamba sayi. Isu tukuti anza ya nde kuti, musa ape madonas, musa mbonza marizi, atidi marizi ya dona. Tinoda marizi ya na mamani. So this is what I wanted to say about free will offerings. You give your best. All the fat. Fat represents the best from what we have. That's what he says in Leviticus 3.16. All the fat belongs to God. You give your best. All the fat is the Lord's. After this. All the fate is the prophet. Stephen says, Donors, do not have to be a good thing. Ketiano, thank you, Holy Spirit, nekuti tsiura. Legia says, Jesus is not concerned about how much you are giving, but how much it means to a giver. So, yes, concerning the Luke 21, Pastor, verse, the Bible tells us that she cast in two minds. We could say she cast in two one-cent coins to 10 pence coins in the currents of the UK uh, money. Two five rand coins can I tell him South Africa? Two my five puller coins do aka kandu wa ni mukazo. Jesu do vaona mari when the woman cast in two mines, two coins Jesus saw those coins entering into the treasure. But his eyes went far away from the offering box. The eyes of the Lord went into a personal savings. Jesus wanted to know how much did she have at home? Yes. How much is she left with? And Jesus saw that she had given everything. That's why he said, she gave in a life, a living. Yes. These two coins that this woman gave, she depended on them for the tomorrow meals. But because she saw Jesus, Jesus meant much more than what the two minds were going to buy her. And she decided to express her love for Jesus, the King of Kings by giving him what a life depended on. And Jesus commended her. In other words, the woman gave her best. Probably she broke a record. She had never given that much in her life. So if you are earning $5,000 a month and you give $500 a month. You do not compare with somebody who has $100 and he has given $50. This one has given more than you. You have given comfortably. You have given reservedly. But this one has given half of your earnings. So you have given 10% of your savings or of your income, but this one has given 
When people look at those monies in the offering basket, they say the one who has given 500 has given more. The one who has given 50 has given less. That's not how God looks at it. God doesn't look at how much is in the offering basket. He looks at how much you had before you gave. What is the relationship between what you have given and what you had? That's how God evaluates the giver. So, you see, it's, it's all about how the Lord Jesus means it to you. Yes. So, this is how people give free will offerings. I want us to talk about instruction offerings. Because this is why we have the good men in the message. Number one, instruction offerings are type and value specific. Instruction offerings, they are type and value specific. Instruction offerings, whereas free will offerings they test your love for the king who is sitting on the throne. Instruction offerings, they test your obedience from the father. Are you a son? Yes, I am a son of God. Are you in the house? Yes, I am in the house of God. Then there comes a question. Have you ever received an instruction from your father? We were talking last night about this and we saw that when you are at home, <clears throat> naturally when you have a child, especially boys, I am more closer to them and I can give examples that are more relevant because I grew up as a boy in my father's house. I can tell you, naturally, a boy child receives natural responsibilities at home. Sometimes you don't really receive a verbatim instruction from the father. Make sure that the fowl and door is closed every night. We don't want dogs and wild cats to devour our chickens. A young boy child in the house, he naturally assumes those responsibilities. Okay? So if there's something wrong that happens to the chickens in the fowl run, the father immediately asks the son, what happened? Where were you? The son cannot say, I don't remember you telling me that it's my duty. The moment you become a son in the house, you already have duties. They are called child duties. In the house of God, equally so, there are responsibilities to children of God. And those responsibilities have three objectives. The first objective, by receiving duties from the father, that proves that the father, the father acknowledges your sonship to him. If the father doesn't give you responsibilities, he is simply saying, you are a bastard. I don't know you. Ask your mama who is your true father. Leave me alone. I know my true children. So, duties that children receive from the father, they are the father's way of acknowledging his children that they are authentically accepted unto him. Okay. Kuchitoro chaiko kuno tenga chingwa. Wano chofake gabasko kuno wachino tenga chingwa. Ausi mungana. Wakao yori pamusana. Taura shakanaka na mai wako. Wacha kuza baba wafu. Ukaona usinga tumwe pamba pa ina baba. Ziva uti baba iwa wane kusa kutuma. Waru kuto kuza uta ausi mungana uwe pana. Uchazo hinda kuna uba wako. Ndo wacha kutuma. Shokuti mungika edu ino e Zimbabwe. Mwanae toona kuti, akangoona kuti paka etu kwa msika anzi kwa wangu wakaroa, hii akasaroa, 
pakatuma wangu mabasa iya akasatuma ai topezi sraida kuna asikuru wake anjadzi ya mai wake kutanika bunza mai imjimi makaya mazamu zamu mimi chete na anjadzi yenyu bunza ya anjadzi yenyu kuti babongo ndiyana kunoda rose ne mzukuru Aba mani tume kana pa wano roa wana taita msikazo ina mani roa jiru kufungo tivaru kura mba kuti jiru mwana wawo ino te investigate kwa nya ayo yo kushikira mai wa zos kwa kumisha kwa wawo wakuru wa vunza kuti rishin kuitika kumba kwenye mwana aga taura na asekuru waki kutumwa kura tizi kwa kutu uri mwana wa pano so ese shawur kunzi itai jait kwa usi ipo baba wano kura usi itane ga Aya kuna uzofungo tukazi ita uti. Dita katu takura misha unu. Iwewe. Secondly, child responsibilities are the father's way of protecting you and disciplining you. Responsibilities, they are a means of inculcating the family traditions, the family values, the family policies the family culture to the child. As we go into the fields to cultivate, we are raising our child with a policy or with a mentality of working for your own survival. This child must know that in this life, if you don't eat, he will die. So we don't just sit him down and teach him, you should work, my child. We take him to our work. Are we watering the garden? We do it together. Are we cultivating the crops in the fields? We do it together. So we are not just giving this child responsibilities. <coughs> we are training him to assimilate into the value system of this house. So there are certain disciplines that you are never going to receive from the sermons. You are only going to have those disciplines when you are put into responsibilities. Panika meka unubu, kasinga bofa kaka buda, ni kunyora manozi, msemwa. Kaucha tozo ona kabuda, wajoi na rime department, mwimba ya mwana. Paonungo chichaira ne mamwe, untanga kunzi ku, atita ure chida, inda o chida ure imewe. Uto ono tenda, nchi kunyora manozi, nchiri nde kakumba. Tesa boshi, zao tumashoku angwa haite. Uto ta atichia suita, mandiba tira maita basa. So getting responsibilities is being given the right environment from where you can be groomed in the culture of the household, the language of the household, the mindset of the household, the principles of the household. So when you are given responsibilities, you are protected from being defiled by those systems of the outside world. Uno shibizi kwa wakangu gara, waka gara. Uno puwa shukito, mira hapa, mira hapa, mira hapa. Ochenge teka. Oto na kutu wakuto, zisi sa kutarika shwa wangu wa chita. Ni kuda kwema responsibilities. Wakuto gona o, kutawara shwa kanaka, watone mwe mwrefu, haucha kurumi za kukumbuka. Wazizi, kwa kwete ne marizo, ne basa, ne imba ya mwana. So being given responsibilities is not an option. The third uh, benefit of receiving instructions and duties in the house of God it trains you it trains you to live a heavenly life while you are still on earth. You know, when the Lord spoke in Matthew 6 from verse 10, in what is called the Lord's Prayer, He said, you should say, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. People did not understand that the word will there is not just an ordinary word. It talks about the whole objective of the Godhead in the Calvary project. Who is going to do the will of God on earth and why would God want his will to be done in earth as it is in heaven? The answer is, we are in transit. Yes. According to Hebrews 13, 14, and 15, here we have no continuing city. We seek one that is to, which is to come. 
So if we are in transit to heaven, we cannot enter heaven as strangers. Heaven must enter into us first before we go into heaven. And when we go into heaven, we are never going to get time to attend to our personal issues. When you go to heaven, all you are going to focus on is the king. Yes. From morning to evening, ningengu <laughs> You want to go to heaven. Revelation <laughs> ah. 4 from verse 1. After this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. Yes. And the voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, the throne was set in heaven. And one sat on the throne. You see now. Yes. Let's see how it happened on the throne. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sedine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. Yes. In sight like unto an emerald. Yes. And round about the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. Yes. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne. Yes. Which are the seven spirits of yes, God. Yes, yes. And before the throne there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne... And round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. Yes. And the first beast was like unto a lion, and the second beast like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man. Yes. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Yes. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him, and they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Ah, you see now. Yes. That's what they do. They don't rest. The scripture is so stubborn. It says they rest not day and night. What do they say? They don't say intervene, interject with the board cutter anointing. I bind, I cast, I curse by fire, by thunder. They say, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Yes. They don't rest. <laughs> they don't rest. Yes. Verse 9 to 11. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth forever and ever. He does it stand up also on the throne. He yes. sits forever and ever. Yes. The four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So, the graphic impression, which is in the verse number 10, is astounding. It makes my life easy to emphasize that finding a duty in the Father's house is getting trained to live in heaven. Yes. The 24 elders, they had crowns on their heads which were of gold according to verse number 4b. Yes. But when they hear a song, okay, when they hear the decree 
which says from the four beasts, holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. When they hear that, what they do, the 24 elders, they take off the crowns of God. According to verse 10, they cast it down and they fall down and say, Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. For thou has created all things, and yes. for thy pleasure they are and were created. Yes. When they approach the throne, their crowns lose relevance to them. They lose relevance to them. Yes. When they come to the throne, their titles, they lose relevance to the one who is sitting on the throne. Yes. When they approach the throne, when they see the throne, yes. their social statuses, they make no sense at all yes. to the extent that they throw their golden crowns and they fall down. Yes. They say, we are doomed. There is nothing else to do. Let's worship him. Yes. And they begin to say, you are worthy to receive glory. This is how we are supposed to worship God and this is how we are going to live forever with God. Yes. Are we going to start to learn to do that when we die? God forbid. This is the time for you to learn to ignore the prowess of your casual glory, your temporary status and whatever it is that you think you have achieved. When you approach the gospel of God, the glory of God and Jesus sitting on the throne, it must give you an impression that makes you nothing of no significance at all yes. when you approach the throne of glory. And you realize all I can do is to dedicate my all to the one that is sitting on the throne. Yes. I don't mind spending hours hearing the word of God. After all, is the king speaking to me? I don't mind sweating in the service of God. After all, I am using this energy that is in my body for the service of the king who sits on the throne forever and ever. Mm. I will fall down. I will throw down my crown of God. Are you a manager? Are you ready to throw down your crown of your managership and worship Jesus? Are you a barrister? Are you a medical doctor? Are you a professor? Are you a rich person? You have millions of dollars. Are you willing to throw down that status and say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God Almighty, which was, which is, and which is to come. I am nothing before Jesus. Nothing. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said. That's what Nebuchadnezzar said. Yes. Solomon said it's vanity of vanities. When you approach the throne of God, you must realize that you are nothing. Yes. The only person who deserves attention is the king seated on the throne. It is the father. So, when you are given duties, they don't just make you feel wanted, accepted to God. They are a place for your preservation unto the day of the Lord. They are also a training ground for a life in heaven. When you get offended with a Christocentric gospel that emphasizes Jesus, you are getting offended at heaven. You are not going. Jesus <laughs> And it is all bored. Yes, 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 we are training you life in heaven. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Now, the crown of God that they threw the 24 elders onto the ground and they fell to the ground and saved him and worshipped him. They were denying themselves to the service of the king. The only job there is for us in heaven is to praise God. That's the only job there. There is no pulpit in heaven. There is no sermon preaching in heaven because there will be no sinners to preach to. Everyone there will be perfect. The only job that we are going to be doing in heaven, it is to praise him, yes. to worship him without resting day and night. Yes. So let's conclude the message. Instruction given is when the Lord speaks to you using his household identity as the father. He says to his children, I want this. So free will offerings are kingdom offerings. But instruction offerings are household offerings. It's the father speaking to his son. Go do this for me. Go do that for me. Go do this for me. Go do that for me. Are you getting this? Yes. Tinewa Nijeji. Igret says, Revelation 5, 12, saying with the Lord, voice with is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory, blessing. Prosper says, I am nothing before his throne. Billy says, Sotomita Inokwira. DG says, Thank you, Lord, for teaching us. Tega Ataibosinzi Visisa Asinyasha Matipa Zizi So. Brother Tandy says, We are in transit, pit stop earth. That's a good illustration there, Brother Tandy. Tendai says, Praising him day and night. Can I say it's Tazizanas in sober mode? Thank you for those who are still in with us and those who are still sober. Brother Preeti says, Amen, giving under instruction teaches us obedience and practicing heavenly life. Mm. So Free will offerings, they are voluntary offerings given by a subject to his king. You are giving to a king. But instruction offerings are children-based offerings. You are responding to the father's instruction. Now, as we look at the good man message in Luke 22, the question was, where are we going to do the Passover from? Where do you want us to prepare the Passover? Oof. And Jesus said, go into the city. A man shall meet you. He's carrying a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in. And you shall say to the good man of the house, the master saith unto thee, yes. Where is the guest chamber? Where shall I eat the Passover with my disciples? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished there, make ready. And they went and found as he had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Now, Pastor Baloy, you would never find Jesus using the word master. To strangers. Yes. Master is an in-house arrangement. Yes. It is an arrangement between a servant and a king. Yes. Or children also call their fathers masters. That's why in Europe, a son, when he's talking to his father, he says, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Yes. We know that. Master is a sign of respect. Master is a sign that I command power and authority to give orders. Yes. 
You get what I'm saying? So, if you look at Luke 22, Jesus was not asking for a favor. Jesus was not begging this good man to, if he was willing, to freely give his guest house for him to do the Passover. No, 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 no. This was not a request, brethren. With all your tools and your abilities, you can read these scriptures as many times as you want. Jesus was not begging. This was an instruction. Yes. But to cut this message shorter than uh, uh, it could be, this man with a pitcher of water represents your flesh. Yes. The good man represents your spirit. So there are resources that Jesus may want to use in the life of a believer. But those resources are held in the flesh. And when we use the word resources, everybody runs to think of money. But the resources are much wider in yes. spectrum yes. than money. We can talk about labor, service to God. You can come and sweep the church floor. Yes. You can come and do decoration in the church auditorium. Yes. You can come and join the media department and serve in various sections there. You can join the praise team and play musical instruments. What are you using? You are a guitarist. You are using your finger and your head and your eyes and your nose and your ears. You are providing a service. But these services are held in the flesh. Yes. Because if you do not have this body, you would not have fingers with which to play the guitar. Yes. So the instruction was simple. Everyone in this world can serve God provided you are alive. If we want people to clap hands for Jesus, they can clap and anyone can clap as long as they have the hands. But not everyone is allowed to serve God. Remember the mystery of the sacrifice. Only those that are alive can serve God. Only those that are not in tone with the beasts can serve God. Yes. <clears throat> so the distinction now between this man and every man in the city was the pitcher of water. Yes. Find a believer with the signs that he has received the true gospel in him. Yes. Find a man bearing a pitcher of water. Water represents the word of God. Yes. Let's just read Ephesians 5, 25 to 26 yes. for the sake of others. Yes. Yes. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church yes. and gave himself for it, yes. that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yes, yes. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot, nor wrinkle, nor any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Thank you. So Jesus washes the church with the water of the word. So the word is the water. You could also compare this with Isaiah 55, verse number 10 to 12. Yes. But we don't need to read it. You can just add it in your notebooks. The man with the pitch of water, he represents your flesh. The good man is the spirit. Who owns the house is the good man and not the man with the pitch of water. As I talk right now, we have people in the church who have so many abilities. Some are good at playing musical instruments. Some are good at various activities that we are doing in the media department. Mm. But they are not saving today. If you ask their reasons why they don't have anything to do in the house of God, they will tell you that they are thinking that it may not be right to do that. Their reasons are because the man does not have a pitcher of water. Mm -hmm. There are so many men in the city which Peter and John could have spoken to regarding this matter. But what distinguished this man was the pitcher of water. 
he was representing the human body in which there is the spirit of man where God has already deposited the word of God. So before the man arrived at the house, the human spirit was represented by the pitcher of water. Yes. The man was representing the flesh. We follow the man with the pitcher of water until we get to the house so that we can meet the good man. Yes. So if there is anything that Jesus needs to do, yes, there is something. He wants to eat the Passover. The Passover is there. The preacher is there. The only problem is the venue. Where can we do it from? The answer is we have to find the believers. They are going to be instrumental in the advancement of the Jesus project, the Passover project. Yes. Because this whole passage, it's all about the Passover. The Passover is there. The preacher is there. The beneficiaries are there. The problem is we don't have a platform from where the Passover is eaten. In other words, is there anything that is needed for the Passover gospel, the gospel of the suffering of Christ, yes. to continue to go forward? Yes, they are. Okay, doesn't matter what problem there is. It doesn't matter what issues they are. What you need right now, find saints. Find the spirit of just men yes. made perfect. Now, our eyes cannot see those spirits. Find the flesh with a pitch of water. Yes. Ah, Peter and God, good men, good men, good women. No, no, no. You know, 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 you that's the right person to yes. look for. Find someone with an interest yes. in the true gospel. Yes. If you find someone like that, he will lead you to the good man. Yes. And so the important emphasis that the Lord made in this miracle is to emphasize that we will not do the Passover if we don't meet the good man. Yes. In other words, the church project cannot continue if we don't find the spirits of just men made perfect. Yes. We need the elect to be saved at their right levels. Your spirit must find salvation. If we don't have spirits that are saved, we are doomed. Yes. We are a bunch of people who are following several <coughs> men bearing pitchers of water, yes. but we can't find the good man. Now, let me simplify this. I know a lot of people are getting confused. The man with the pitcher of water, he represents your flesh. The pitcher of water represents your spirit. It is also pointing to the good man. He represents the spirit. Yes. So the human spirit is the container of the word of God. That's why it is represented or portrayed as a pitcher of water. But he is a person as also. Yes. That's why he has no name. He is called the good man. Yes. What do we want to do? We want to establish a praise team in the church. We have so many people with good voices in the church. In other words, there are so many men in the city. <coughs> we will make a mistake if we invite all people with good voices to join the praise team. We will be in trouble. We are going to end up with a scandal upon a scandal in the praise department. How do we know which one to recruit into the praise team? We need to look for a pitcher of water. Yes. So when we speak to those people, we ask them how much they've understood of the word of God. Yes. What are we doing? Are we making or doing interviews? No. We are looking for the good man. Yes. The moment you start to ask about the word of God, you are trying to locate the good man. 
as you ask the moment Simmons, have you listened to, are you enjoying the word? What about yesterday's message? As they respond to you, you actually say, what, what? Can you come again? You can actually tell, this one is dry. This spirit is still dry. There's nothing of God in this person's spirit. It's dangerous to make this person a part of a responsible section of the church. We can't risk the work of the gospel. His voice is good, but there's no water in this picture. Yes. <laughs> Pastor Baloy, the man with the picture, we have found him. The problem is there's no water in the picture. It was all right when you come to Temba. Chow Chagai Pabira. Teachers of Tara de Mi. I know it's a Maraca Nak. Do you know to pass the Padipa Pond to the Tara's donors? No good Maraja to pass. Come on, be a corner in Paches, Valo in Patagatovans, Gavagata Mauditions, Valo Rova. I'm put the Kondere, good to move Picham of Abnafura. Kalas Vagadai, good men. Yes. But if there's some droplets of water in the picture, we will know we have somewhere to start from. Yes. We will finally locate the good men of the house. Yes. We are finishing the message now. I want us to look at this scripture. It's amazing. There is something that is so fantastic about <coughs> this, this thirteen. And they yes. went and found a Z had said unto them, and they made ready the Passover. Yes. You know, the fantastic thing about the, the good men, the good man, brethren, look at me, the good man is a soft man. The good man is a natural bias towards the things of God. Whenever you meet the good man, yes. he will not start to ask you unnecessary questions. Which master is that? Mm -hmm. How does he become a master without a guest chamber for his Passover? Why does he want to do the Passover if he doesn't have the guest chamber? How does he want to use my guest chamber? And he also tells me which one I should give him. I have a guest chamber in the ground floor. I have a guest chamber in the upper room. Why is he insisting on the upper room one? I have got my own plans with that one. Is he married? I've got my daughters here. I don't want him to start messing up with my daughters when he comes. And the apostles will say, that one is complicated. Yes. <laughs> Everything that Jesus wanted to do became easy when the good man was located. But the problem is, you can't meet the good man without first bumping into the man with the pitch of water. So the problem we have today is all these churches you are seeing, they are filled with men with pitchers without water. It's called a picture without water crisis. A dry system, a Montana meets a Bellevue Abatoa system. They are carnal minded. That's why they need raving, they need intoxication, they need hypnotism in order for them to respond. The pastor must, must do some gimmicks and some dramatic things for <laughs> people to bring out their wallets and give. <laughs> You are looking for a guest chamber from the wrong person. The man <coughs> with the pitcher of water. He is not our answer. Our answer is the good man. But the problem is, the world we live in does not have a natural connection with the good man. But if we follow the man with the pitcher, we will find the good man. The good man is there, and the good man is so understanding. Just one conversation, the yes. master wants to use this upper room. And Jesus was so stubborn and rude. That's why it's a miracle. Yes. Imagine you are talking to someone you have never met, and you are sure the person who has sent you has never met him. Yes. And yet is giving him orders like this. 
What were the orders? <laughs> 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 and say unto the good men, yes. the master say unto the lead vessel, I brought out that I didn't have a And you shall say unto the good men of the house, the master said unto thee, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples? That is the guest chamber. Now to your organization. copy. Clear everything useless in that guest chamber. Make it ready for us. If there's anything that is not relevant to the Passover, take it out. Is he going to pay? The master, masters don't pay. If he is talking as a master, you are getting nothing. Yes. You are simply obeying the master. How many good men are we going to have today in Jesus' Revelation Ministries? Tinema good men mangani. Why do we have pastors negotiating, pleading? with their congregants to do something in the name of God. We have an answer today. They have a man with a pitcher without water in the city. Jesus said the man is going to be carrying a pitcher of water. It means this man had water in that pitcher. Yes. So when you hear us saying, my guy is stealing money from people, we are not saying he's a thief because it is my guy doing it. No. We are talking about two things. The situation we have is like the situation of a father talking to his son and asking him, I don't want you to impregnate people's daughters. I don't want trouble in this house. Make sure you behave yourself orderly out there. Don't go around sleeping with people's daughters and going away with it. You are going to be in deep trouble with me. And then after 20 years, the boy is now 44 years old. The father calls me and says, Donald, you are still not yet married. What is wrong? And Donald says to his father, Oh, Papa, I think you have forgotten. 20 years ago, when I was 24, you said you don't want me to get into trouble with girls. That son must have a mental problem. What the father was not happy with is irresponsible behavior in relationships. He was not asking him to be in celibacy for the rest of his life. You can get married, my son, the proper way. Find a girl. Do the proper formalities and settle down in marriage. I am not forbidding you to marry. I am forbidding you to be promiscuous. These are the two differences we have. We have people who say, why are you saying Makandiwa is stealing money? Don't you receive offerings in your church? The issue is not about the coming of money. The issue is about how the money is coming and why. The people are coming with money to church. Yes. I can give another example. A girl can say, I am not a prostitute. I don't sell my body to men for money. But if this girl says to her boyfriend, hey, Donald, could you please buy me airtime? Donald cannot say, didn't you say you are not a prostitute? How come you are asking me for money? The situation is different. In the first account, the girl is asked for sexual favors in exchange for money. But in the second account, the girl has a normal relationship with her boyfriend and she is not selling sexual favors to Donald for a time. Donald is not receiving anything back from this girl 
after sending a time to this girl. So this Donald is not right to say, didn't you say you are not a prostitute? Why then are you asking me for a time? So we have a problem with people who are always fanatics of falsehoods. They think they can find an occasion to attack the gospel by saying, if you say the gospel is not for sale, why then are you asking people to give offering? Are you a fool? I know in Africa we have no shortage of dandies and fools. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you don't need to bring out your foolishness all the time. But let's conclude this message. The place where Jesus wanted to do the Passover, it represents whatever needs arise in the wake of the gospel. We already have the gospel. The Passover is available. What we don't have is the platform for the gospel to be preached. How then are we going to have those resources? We are not going to use foreigners. We are not going to use strangers. The house of God is a family, and every child has a responsibility in the house of his father. That's why when Jesus sent Peter and John, he was not soliciting for donations and doing some petitions or begging for sponsorship. He was actually demanding that the good man clears the room for the master. Yes. How confident was Jesus that the good man was going to obey? He was speaking as a master. As a master, he was confident. My servant will do as I instruct. My son will do as instructed. So, instruction giving tests obedience. Let's look at um, 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Yes. I want us to read verse number 10 going downwards. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower, yes. what minister bread for your food? Bread and, for your food. And multiply your seed so on. Yes. And increase the fruit of your righteousness. Yes. Being enriched in everything to all bountifulness. Yes. Which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Yes. For the administration of this service not only supplied the want of the saints, but is abundant also. By many thanksgiving unto God. By well, many thanksgiving unto God. Yes. Yes. Whilst by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection unto the gospel of Christ. It's a professed subjection to the gospel of God. And for your liberal distribution unto them and unto all men. It's a professed subjection to the gospel of Christ. You have to subject yourself to the gospel of Christ. Now, if we go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 16, we see that yes. the apostle gave an order. Yes. It was an instruction. Yes. Yes. Now concerning the collection for the saints. Yes. As I have given order to the churches of Galatia. You have given order to the churches of Galatia. Even so do you. What are you asking us to do? Upon the first day of the week. Upon the first day of the week we should do what? Let every one of you lay by him in store. As God hath prospered him. Yes. That there be no gatherings when I come. Mm -hmm. In Romans 15, verse number 25, the Bible says, But now I go unto Jerusalem yes. to minister unto the saints. For it had pleased them of Macedonia and yes. Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Yes. It had pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, yes. their duty is also to minister unto them in, in carnal in, things. Yes, yes. So when you are performing a duty, you are settling a debt. Yes. The Jews, 
have ministered to the Gentiles with the spiritual gift of the word. The Gentiles have a duty to minister unto the Jews in their carnal things. Yes. And this is what Apostle Paul also taught in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Yes. yes. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, yes. verse, number, 11. verse number 11, yes. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap of your carnal things? All right, verse number 12 to 14. If others be partakers of this power over you, and not we rather, nevertheless we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Yes. Do you not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers of the altar? Yes. Even so, yet the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Thank you. So there's somebody asking, Apostle, can you explain so that we understand the Lord said in John 14, 12, there are many mansions, and you will prepare a place for us. If we just pray all day, how are we going to stay in mansions? Hey, I don't know where this one is coming from. Yeah, he's <laughs> Uh, I don't know, but the, the, the correct answer to this one is go and look for our same title, yes. My Home, yes. in the sound cloud. You understand this. But coming to this, verse 14 is giving an instruction again. Uh, even so, uh, the Lord ordained, the word ordained there, it means commanded. Yes. The word ordained, it means instructed that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Yes. That's why in Romans 15 it says the Gentiles are a debtor to the Jews. Yes. Because they benefited from the spiritual things of the Jews. Yes. They also need to minister their carnal things to those who have ministered their spiritual things to them. Yes. So it's a duty. And sometimes we struggle to clarify these things because when we tell you about these things, we are always mindful of where you are coming from. I think I want to tell you today that what kind of A church was the Corinth, the Corinth church that they were told by Apostle Paul that he had already given an order to the churches of Galatia. The churches of Galatia received an order, and then later in the in the process of the gospel, the apostle gave a reference. And he told them, I'm giving you an order, but you are not the first church to give this order to. It appears the apostle was careful in giving this order to Corinth. He could not have started giving orders with Corinthian churches. He knew they struggled in their faith. Yes. But now that the churches of Galatia were already obeying this order, it was now relevant and it was now convenient for him to say, oh, that church that is always lacking, let me now give the same order to the same church. Yes. But to us here, we see a clear picture that the church can receive orders. Yes. We are now clearly understanding that Believers, children of God, can receive instruction. Instruction, brethren, to give. Yes. I don't know if you have ever heard it. Have you ever received an instruction? Now, if you have never received an instruction, 
it probably means you behave like the Corinthian church. They always received instructions the last because they could not find they were easy to start to argue and say, where are you taking this from? Yes. Do you find that, Pastor, uh, surprising that sometimes people in the church will come to you and say, we heard the apostle preaching this. We want to know which scripture he preached it from. <laughs> in their minds, they'll be thinking that such things are unscriptural. Even though you are ready to provide those scriptures, because they are always there. But sometimes you wonder, this person must not be a believer. Because if you have been quiet for six months, and then one day you say, I want to ask, where is this coming from as far as scriptures are concerned? You are saying, finally, you found something to condemn in the gospel. But before you found something, you never spoke out. What spirit is that that causes you to open your mouth only when you find something wrong? <laughs> out of how many sermons, maybe 20, maybe 30, you found something that you think is wrong. And you say, I want to talk about it. If you are a child in the house, you have to ask yourself, do these two things. How many things do I know now? that I learned from this man, that I didn't know. How many things, how many stupid things was I doing before I learned the things that I learned now from this man? How come suddenly I have started to be his supervisor? If I at any time appreciated what God has done to this man to revealing all these things, we are always going to find people like that. But let's conclude. I want to emphasize this, and even after this message, we shall always continue to emphasize it. Times without number. It doesn't matter how many you think we are. We are now too many. Right now we are struggling to think what we shall do because our building can no longer accommodate us. But be that as it may, the fact that you are too many now in the church does not mean that the Father does not have anything for you to do. Yes. Not getting instructions from the Father should be a cause for concern. You have to find it suspicious. Yes. What is wrong with me? Could the Father have an issue with me? Sometimes instructions are given in the crowd. But do not think that there are no personal instructions given in the house. So in 2014, the church was still just starting. We had so many challenges. There was no Pastor Baloy at that time. There was no Evangelist Mafolo. There was no Pastor Marange. Amai Juenga was not yet teacher Juenga those days. I was struggling and I resigned from my job. There was no money. But I was required to go into town every day and preach and baptize people and all that required money, which I didn't have at that time. So it happened that during those days, I owed the property owner. I was a tenant. I rented a house from another lady, very old lady. She was a very sweet woman. But our relationship started to sour up because of my inconsistencies in paying rent out. I was not very much behind. I didn't owe her even a month. But every month, in about five months or so, I would not pay on time. And so she would come and say, I need your money, and so forth and so forth. Every running around that I used to know how to do, it failed those days. I paid you because I said, manya, manya. Mm. But I had a car, and so I was praying about it. I was saying, ah, Lord, help me. I cannot struggle with this for any longer. And then one day, I was told to sell my car, and I sold it. 
I sold my car and paid my rent house. I think at that time, I, that was the only time I was now behind in paying my rent house. The moment I sold my car, I paid all my arrears. The person who bought the car didn't pay cash. He also <laughs> paid in arrears. <laughs> but during that time, I tell you today, I think that was the most painful time in my life. Because that was my second car and I was too fond of it. I didn't want to lose it. But I had to lose it. And so one day as I was going to the first to preach, the Lord decided to teach me about a lot of things. One thing that I learned during that period is that the human body is an enemy of godly things. Naturally, it doesn't yes. like the things of God. Some of the things that we struggle with, if we could understand spiritual things from a different perspective, we would not struggle. For example, that time the Lord said, if today you are told that this is your last day on earth, would you still continue to think about this car? Because I saw it, but I continue to think about it. I started to run around to look for money to go and pay this guy whatever deposit he had given me to redeem my car back. <laughs> but I can tell you that failed as well. So I was thinking about it all the time. I think I was very sad for some days. And my wife saw that this man is not happy because he saw this car. But the Lord said to me, if this is, if you are told today that it's your last day, what are you going to do? Are you going to continue to think about this? And I realized that I was somehow unhappy that the Lord had caused me to have a different way of life. I had a decent life. I managed, I afforded to have a decent life with my family. But suddenly I couldn't afford things that were very basic to me. And that place where I was renting, I, that was my third downgrade from where I stayed when I was still employed. I downgraded myself and downgraded myself. That was my third downgrade, trying to look for a cheaper, cheaper accommodation. But even in that third downgrade, I was struggling to pay rentals. So after selling the car, it so hit me. I was so hit. And I was saying, Lord, but how could these things be? I can go back to work right now and things will be fine. I'm trying to show you that as long as you are thinking with your mind, you will always struggle to relate with God. What was paining me was not a spiritual. It was a carnal thing, a very, very, very carnal and nonsensical issue mm -hmm. to such an extent that as I talk to you about it now, I feel embarrassed that at some point I had an issue with God because of a smoker. <laughs> I felt so bitter with my teacher. I can tell you. So, <laughs> I feel so ashamed. I had to repent from that gain saying. Mm. What God wanted me to do was much more important than that, those trivial issues. So the question here is, have you ever <coughs> served God with your good man? Have you ever ministered to God with the good man? Or we are dealing with the man with the pitcher of water? Or maybe it's a different man. It's a man without a pitcher or a man with a pitcher without water. <laughs> Wakambo imba, we are good men, 
Because you can show me that we are good men. You know the rule, so. Yes. Now, the Lord said to me at that time when I was thinking about my car. He said to me, "If you save God, and after saving God, after doing something in God's name, after losing something to God, after, if if after saving God with something." You feel deprived after that. You have wasted yourself. So, I believe that we are going to lose this life without having comprehended properly the proper life we must live in God. Because at that time I realized that there are certain things that God does not accept from us, but he accepts them as our lessons in relating with him. I want to give you an example. My child, my three-year-old child, can come to me and say, Daddy, I, I drew you on this paper. When I look at my child's drawing, it is very ugly. And I can actually see that this drawing does not represent me in any way. This is rubbish. But because of the age of my child, I will say thank you. And after taking it, I will put it somewhere safe so that when he grows up, I will show him, do you remember, do you know what you did to me or what you did for me when you were three years old? And he said, I don't remember. And I will show him, I will keep it for good memory's sake. Saka, if he says, Daddy, I now know how to sing that song that you like in church, and I say, sing it for me, I can actually smile at him singing that song, even when I know that there's never been such a discord like this. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm accepting is not the song. Yes. I'm accepting... The age of my child and the effort that he has put into this work. God deals with us like that. Yes. I don't want to talk much about this because I think myself also, I'm still learning a lot of things. But I've realized that there are things that God doesn't accept from us because of the principles that he set in his word. But he has a partial acceptance because of our age. What it simply means is he is taking it as a stepping stone. He knows if we continue to learn that way, we will come to do things the proper way. If my daughter prepares a meal and I find it not tasting good, I will not eat it, but I will say thank you. Because by saying thank you, I am encouraging her to cook better next time. But I will not tell her that your food is tasting nice. I will tell her, you need to improve so that she may do better. And she may have that desire to do better. So there are certain things that we may be saying they are wrong today. It doesn't mean God did not see those things. It simply means they are not recorded as actual things that we have done for him. He is still waiting for us to give. <laughs> In your record, you have not yet started giving, but he saw the offerings you put there. He doesn't recognize them. They were your staggering moments in the faith. You were still learning how to walk in the faith. In other words, that was not a sin. God accepts it. He accepts them as your lessons in righteousness. Why did Zira Mabasa Kururama Sakamari Ano Gamuchira could Zid Zira Kwako Basaracho Waka it up Waka Zidzira Ari Gamshi Ano Gamchira could Zid Zako Waka it Kutuku Zid Zira Kuba Maraga Zona Asis Waka Pamara and I was Gamshi Marada Dion Zira Mari Aka later Nayo the Old Testament Catisio Apana chaka gamchira chaka yetu kwa Novo Testament. Aka nko gamchira kuzizira yiko kwa kwa gamchira kate. Ima zizira kupira kuna mwani. Ndawo na malesi nzei. 
mozo tanga kupa kana maa kugona. <laughs> so he understands our childishness. He gives us room to grow. So my question to you is if you want to learn to give the proper way to God, do you know what you are required to have is the right environment to give. This message, the good man, it identifies the right environment. The environment is the good man. Your spirit is the good man. We have to reach your spirit. When God gives the instruction, we are expecting that instruction to arrive to the good man. But in most cases, instructions are coming to the men with a pitcher of water. That is not the time to execute the instruction of God. We have to follow the men until we find the good men. Yes. When we find the good men, we will not get a lot of reasoning. We will get obedience and subjectivity to the God of heaven. When they found the good man, there was no trouble. There was no following. He made the raid in the guest chamber, and everything was fine, and they went. The Passover was done. The preaching of the gospel was done. Chi chamurda kwa chiva. Truda kutipasi kariji giwe, donya yacho cheti. Chatriku nyato da kutititenga, truda kutchaga, peku jigira pasika. Pasika ndi jeso. Tuna kutifangeri parizwe. Ukanzi kwa tati tuna kutenga maspika. Tuna kuchaga peo kujigira pasi. Tika tuna kutenga bazi rechechi. Tuna kuchaga peo kujigira pasi. Tika tuna kutenga makamera. Tuna kuchaga peo kujigira pasi. Pusi kune wangu wano kunze kwenye kawo. Wachana kunze kwa fangeri. A cameras ane tautiri shike kunze kwenye. Saka tiku gazira the guest chamber for the Passover. To be eaten. The Passover. Tinayo, tinayo, tinayo. Wanofaji na kwenye tarinja ya zaaji wa chizi fambira. Wari ipo dipita na John. Chatisi na bezi. Tidukucha ka good man. So if you hear us talking about giving and offerings and so forth, don't bother yourself and think that it involves everyone. No, 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 no. We have a very, very precise criteria. We are going to identify the men with a pitcher of water. And he shall lead us to the good man. When we find the good man, we will be good to go. Yes. We will be good to go. When we teach you like this, we are expanding your understanding. We are trying to narrow your doubt. Could this instruction be coming to me? Because when we say right now, we want to raise money. The first question you should ask yourself is not, do I have the money? No, 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 that's not the problem. The issue is, the first question should be, could this be coming to me? Yes. Am I part of the instructees? Instruction E. If you want to answer that question properly, the first point of call is, is your man with a pitcher of water? Have you ever met the good man? <laughs> if you have never seen the good man or met the good man, you are not the one. Don't bother yourself. So if you look at the instruction offering, instruction offerings, I said they are what? Specific, Brother Nelson? Yes, they are type. Type specific, yes? The value specific. The instructions are not ambiguous. Yes. The instructions are not speculative. Jesus did not say, Probably ask him if he has any room free for me to use. Jesus was type specific. Yes. He said, I want the upper room. Yes. Mozakutara kwa shikuna rwaza. Angadaya kanguta ewoka. Zimba zripo pano zaka wanda. Zochungo kupaya ya ndinoda. Kutumusaru zoto mwanda kukira. Shepa sika ya nipalo po. Mwasaru zaro. Ayo wa manyanyi. And this could have brought up to my matter and I'm not sure as a tradition. No, 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 no. The Lord was type specific. Yes. 
where is the guest chamber? Mm -hmm. Yes. And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. Yes. There, make ready. Mm -hmm. The Lord was specific. He wanted to use the upper room. Yes. He was not willing to settle for less. Mm -hmm. If you are receiving an instruction, you don't offer alternative choices. Yes. In Luke chapter 5, there was another type specific instruction. Yes. The Lord wanted to preach, and the Bible says he entered into one of the ships, verse 3, yes. which was Simon's, and he prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land, and he sat down and he told the people out of the ship. Yes. Now, the Lord was in the boat. And he said to Peter, can I go a little into the sea? Yes. I want to preach using this boat. Yes. He didn't ask, is there anyone with anything that can be used in any way in the preaching of the gospel? No, it's not in any situation. Yes. It's a specific instruction. Yes. It's a specific instruction. These are the instructions. Yes. So, if you are a child in the house, there are going to be instructions. Sometimes you are instructed to serve as a steward, as an administrator, as a helper. Sometimes you are instructed to serve God with your substance. Maybe let me simplify the word substance. Yes. With your possessions. Yes. Sometimes you are instructed In the case of the uh, good man message, the Lord explained why he wanted the guest chamber. Yes. I want to eat my Passover from the guest chamber. That's why we are talking about this issue now. Parda kuit kwei, pane pass over, and I would give you one. Korea would pack at a book up a bar, put up an avangana as a bow, a passes in as a bow to Daranyararo. Vesvano, what it's quick, kick and out its quaker, Monyana, Dr. Zichi, she pass over Pana. Yes. See my marriage, you two wait as a pass over. She was weak. But our little ash, do my truak. He is the Lord, he is the King of Kings, he is our Father. So when he speaks to us, he doesn't take off his jacket as a king. Mm -hmm. He still commands that authority of a king. The master has spoken. If you are a true child of the kingdom, when such instructions are given, you will feel it inside your bones. Mm -hmm. It is true. The king has spoken. My father has spoken. I should do it. But if you are not a child, you say, I don't care. I will think about it. If you are a child, you will not have time to think about whether or not you should obey the instructions of the father. Children don't behave like that. Only bastards do that. Ah? Sakai Jesus chenda re kuno diri zamaru anda tu diri ze di chamba ufunga magamba muzi koma na agada uda ufunga chi di kurove Jesus. Apa na chino ufunga? Dai uchifunga ukadewa kambu yitu kwa mazi baba yelewe. Azita uporo ufunga. Atu wakua kuzi mazi baba baba ukura mpura hapa uchime uru wangu kuchibusu wa msoro. Uchengeta ndemu. Uchifama ni chika kutula chewa yitu paka nipe tau nilechi petimaya chewa yitu su uchilechi jimbo. Tuzu leta alo ufunga yitu. Wauda utaurezi yitu kutazi na uporo ufunga. Kwa nzi kumbi wa maru uchilechi. Na uporo ufunga yewewe. I don't want to be this. I don't pay you when I make it. What else on Bumona make it? But I was when I passed out to Kafunga's words. Why it is called my shame? What I go for to go area and they did. When was what would you take a good day? Passing at your own. I may not need a matrimony, but what is that? 
kana wa muvangere wa sopo runo ta zvizira jeka manje unya zoro ta amati bona zvinhu zvaka jeka zvisika ite mu new testament hauna kubudirwa kuno boitika zvinhu zvese zviri sopo ende zviri order yes saka kunyepedzera zvako kunenge muchitwa nevana kuti ndira mbono funga chokwadi ndeche kuti their pictures are empty and when people's pictures are empty the safe way to deal with them don't talk to them at all yes. that's why when jesus sent the apostle he said to them identify the men with a picture of water pastor what did you learn in this message yeah quite a number of things that i've learned especially the um, the proper understanding of uh, the first uh, way of giving the free will offering to god yeah i learned quite a, num- a lot of things uh, that we have to approach uh, jesus as as the king and that perspective of the king uh, again i think it was we taking it from the perspective of um, Bana King Swati and these other kings that that we have in this world not in the perspective of the throne of God and its relevance and significance to us and the manner by which we have to conduct ourselves uh, from the way that I was giving myself or the way that I used to give I I I, I can see that um, it was a, a a defective way of approaching uh, giving i think it it was also uh, going to be connected to the first teaching that we had in the mystery of um, of the sacrifice and also coming to this instruction um way of giving you you start to see that it is there also in the word of god not only that you start to see other churches which actually complied to the instructions and you also see uh, like the corinthian example the believers who struggled also in in that aspect but um, it is very it is very clear Uh, it, 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 it is very clear also that God is not concerned about the amount as we may think about it or as we may be particular about it ourselves but he is concerned about the, the understanding the attitude um, and also the, 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 the value that we attach to the Lord that we are ministering unto so there are quite a number of things that that we learned and uh, the other thing which is very important is the the master um, attribute or the master position of Christ in our faith or in our life in the gospel uh, that master to save in relationship it was maybe on on our mouths but not in the way we live practically saka kana achitaura kristo achipa instruction anenga achitoti waudze kuti master ati tiri kuda zvakati those instructions the command is not negotiating neither is he asking for your for your input what do you say about it do you have anything to offer in 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 if if you don't have the, the if you don't want with the apa guest chamber do you have any house that you can offer if you, if you are committed with that one find us a small one eh uh, find a smaller we, we one beg, we beg we beg eh tokumbira one that kind of arrangement yes saka pani pa point instruction then you start to say no i don't have this instruction i have the other one which is a lesser in terms of its coverage and in terms of because that was a finished because Jesus mentioned that the guest chamber should be finished 
It's like the Lord looked into, he zoomed it, and he saw everything inside. Yes. He said that one is good because it's finished. It's finished. The table and the chairs yeah. are there. They are nice. They are nice. I think I, yeah. I will do well if I take <laughs> on that one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Mm. Like, uh, uh, I think this is a very powerful uh, teaching, not only in the aspect of giving, as we may think about it, in the perspective of money, but also even what you were talking about, the praise, to say, if you ever involved the good men in your praise, whatever you're doing is the good men, or was ever the good men involved. That is a very critical a question that you have to ask yourself. So, uh, it's, it's a very uh, powerful teaching. And you realize that God looks at your ability more than what you have done. Yes. Because he is the one who knows how much ability he gave you. Yes, you cannot lie. You cannot tell God that uh, my abilities are very small. I'm not able. <laughs> yes. You are talking to your Lord, to the King, to your yes. Creator. Yes. That's why when that woman put in two coins, he said, that's her ability. Yes. She has outgiven anyone here, everyone here. Akatar's yes. ability, I come from Kazi. Do you have any demand? Yes. I have to run up my shrine because my shrine, man, it is about the amount. They don't Saka, know about this issue. Yeah. I don't know what Christ was doing. What I did to go to my house, I was going to go Especially those who are rich, those who are rich materially, they have that attitude to say, what do you want this money for? This one is enough for you, like what you were saying, opposed to that people look at us and say, by evaluating their, their life and maybe they can uh, calculate using their heads, the estimated uh, <laughs> uh, needs that we have, not looking at Christ, not looking at the kingdom, but just looking probably at the ministers. Some maybe they look at where we are attending the service. They say, this is number 88, where these people meet. I think if I give them um, $200, it, it is enough. If even if I give them a thousand, it is enough. It's a donation kind of an approach. You to go out to I want to go. I want to say. Yes. Uh, I say. Let me give them this one. It can suffice. Yes. What they need. Saka kumura mara kusinga it, but ono goshin doctor abad sira because ono tambura. Saka nuku tambuzi kwa or gento abad sira. So sometimes these things, we face them daily when we talk to people, even when we meet people and they want to give. It was not only a teaching maybe to us as believers, but it was, all, it was also an awakening to the ministers mm -hmm. of the gospel in, in the approach or in the manner by which they ought to protect the gospel. But if you are not careful as a minister now to be able to identify or to be able to see yes. that this attitude that this man is coming to offer uh, to God is not the right attitude yes. or it's not the right understanding. But you all maybe because you have got a need that you feel this need. Next time, but in so doing, you are misrepresenting the gospel. At the same time, you are making that person to walk away with the wrong perspective concerning our Lord that we serve. Yes, uh, we, we learned a lot. Uh, actually, the realization is you can't serve God without uh, having first positioned the good man in his appropriate position uh, within uh, the twine of you, the flesh and uh, the spirit man. So the flesh man having the picture in his hand, 
he must, by having water, he must be able to submit to the uh, good men of the house. To the good men. Yes, because it's only the good men who is, who is uh, perfect for, yes, yes. And take note, Brother Nelson, that the apostles were not instructed to talk to the men with the picture. Yes. We don't have dealings with the man. Yes. We just have to use him to locate the good man. Yes, yes. And and it's uh, so difficult to find the good man. <laughs> because so many people have to do everything with the man with the picture. That's true. Yes. And now, Stephen, if we divide this sermon, no gonna put it for six for sixteen weeks, kuma shrine. I can assure you. Can I return the gushika foot of a shike pachoka and jagadai? Eunice is saying free offering is an appreciation to the king and we don't expect to get anything in return. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite powerful. Very. Very. And even the realization that uh, if you are not going to be able to give him all these two capacities as uh, a free will, as, as well as a, by instruction, yeah. then it means you are not a child of God. But yeah. most importantly, if you are not going to be able to take instruction, then you should be questioning yourself. <laughs> really, I, am I a child of God? Yes. Yeah, for a long time, maybe all this world is revolving around people looking for money. Yes, that's true. The the school that we attended, the, 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 the businesses that we were doing and everything, the focus was if I get money, that is all what matters. And for a long time in that system, now coming to the kingdom now, uh, it is now the having difficulties in most of us. To, to, to then understand. Yeah, to liberate yourself. Yes. That kind of um, not not looking good Zimba, but to put yourself in the in their shoes to say, what is it that was happening? That was in them. That yes. was in them. What understanding what did understanding they have? Did they have? Yes. Comparing them with us and the way we think about whatsoever we have, the detachment that they had with their, yes. how they parted. It, if you read from the scriptures, yes. it was an easy thing. They did not struggle, yes. if you read from the scriptures. When they received the gospel, they said this is a worthy cause to, to part with whatever uh, material and things that I have. The money into the custody of men who actually at some point they said silver and gold they didn't have. Yes. They never bought that. If we give them so much money, mm. <laughs> 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 yes. <laughs> yes. They, they were not moved by that. Yeah. They understood that the apostles have something more important yeah. than whatever value of these houses that we are selling in the lands. Yeah. Yes. They never measured the, the financial status of the apostles yes. before they brought their offering. Yes, that's and true. also the idea of someone following your offering, because if you have, not, if you have given, you should not follow it to see where you that... You can't come yes. back to the throne to, to and ask, see, where did you put my offering? Which means I want to put my mm -hmm. offering. It's a donation. Even if you had give, you have parted with the offering, but you are still with you your offering. Yeah. 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 It all, yeah. Yes. It all goes back again to the conversion which was in them through the gospel. Yes. They had much water in their pictures, yes. which gave them confidence of uh, the reformation also, which was in the apostles, yeah. to give trust, to give themselves unto God. Yeah. And because uh, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you don't trust the apostles that if you give them your money, that money will be put on good use. 
What confidence do you have that you even trust the gospel, the gospel that they preach? Mm, yes. Pastor, you are bringing up a very um, interesting subject. Look at it. The God of heaven trusted us with their souls. Yes. They are literally in <laughs> our care, in our hands. But they themselves cannot trust us, some of them, with the ordinary <laughs> money. Mwaraka ti trust ame mwea enyu, akati chenge tesa mwea enyu. Iwe waka, mwea wako waka esko mwako mangu, ndi u tarire, ndi u chenge te ndi u rere, nefangeli. Ovo wacha ndina trust ya kuti ndika paku na mwari mari yu nita basa shini. Unombo ziba ya rekuti, Muso waka pari nziru kwa yosho kura mwari. Maria kasha nisi kwa yaka nga vya vipi. <laughs> Kune wangu 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 a lot of people look down upon the preachers because they, they put them into the same group with the charlatans, the false preachers, yes. who only started to relate with money because of the church. Yes. They think that everyone who is a pastor today came from poverty. Yes. He was lacking, he didn't have a job, he didn't have any steady income, he couldn't feed his family and raise his children. Yes. That's why he became a pastor. So one of what we say, ah, now we have Mari, Aga Vuguni kwa itambura ndo bangu tanga church saga mara kai bati ram church. That assumption is also very raw, yes. and I think it provokes the very core of the grace of God. Yes. <laughs> when God brings a man into the grace, it is grace because it's not end. And that grace that is not end is also the reason why you are in the grace itself, yourself. Yes. You didn't deserve to receive the gospel. If God was to look at you and say, is my doctrine safe? Can I trust this sinner with my doctrine? He could have not trusted you. Yes. You could still be in your sins and God would be saying, I want to give you the gospel, but I don't trust you. <laughs> I think you are likely to abuse my gospel. <laughs> you are likely to abuse my grace. Yes. So by attacking the integrity of the preacher, they are actually attacking the institution of grace. They are putting themselves at a cliff edge with God. Yes. Yes. Joshua says, following the man with an empty picture is disobedience on its own. One will never meet the good man from disobedience. Prosper says, yes, we are trusting you with our numa, but reluctant when it comes to our money. Ryan says, amen on that issue. The separation of a false prophet and a true one is the challenge. Some know they are dealing with false prophets, but remain under their guidance. That's why they don't trust them. <laughs> Eunice says, we don't question the king what he has done with your free will offering. Once you give your free will offering, it ceases to be yours. As such, cannot ask the king. Sandra says, we being taught royal etiquette, we are not commoners anymore. Wonderful. Yes. This one has brought a very important aspect. Yes. We are no longer commoners. Therefore, you don't talk like a commoner. Yes. Because there are certain utterances that we are seeing believers making which are signs that they are still commoners. Yes. Even this issue we're talking about, Pastor, that people will say, I want to give, but I don't trust Pastor Balu. Mm -hmm. If I give this much, maybe he will not uh, get wild. Mm -hmm. yes. They don't know how much he have handled to this date. Yes. You know, when you don't talk about money a lot in the church, people will start to think so meanly towards you. Yes. But of course, that was designed to be like that. Because 
Remember, faith is not built by seeing things. You are supposed to believe by hearing. Yes. So we focus on teaching you the word. But if you learn the royal etiquette, some of the things you used to think or say in the world, where you were, you are not going to continue thinking about them anymore. Yes. You are going to control your mouth and your head also. There are some things that the devil will put in your mind. Yes. Don't speak those things without evaluating them first against the standard of the doctrine of Christ. Yes. Should I be thinking like this? Should I be talking like this as a child of God? Yes. This must be the devil putting words into my mind. Yes. I cannot defile myself. I cannot bring contempt to the man that is sitting on the throne. Yes. So we thank God, brethren, we are coming to the end of our service. I wanted to do two segments but I realized it's not possible. We are going to have another message on a separate day. Um, remind me, Brother Nelson, it's yes. titled Absalom the Raven. Right. And we are going to hear it in the future, God permitting. Yes. But I also want you to know that the message I have shared with you today was given to me um, quite a number of months ago, a good man, and I was given this message because of work that is in our hands at the moment. And I was sharing with you this message so that you can be able to understand what happens in the house of God, how is the house of God managed, and as a child of God, how do you handle yourself when matters arise in the house of your father? Yes. What should be your reaction, and how do you react the best way acceptable to God? So I want to encourage you to continue listening to this message because it is a message we are going to continue to talk about until we arrive where the Lord wants us to arrive. So I want to say to you, we have a project in the house of God which we want to launch today. Yes. We have a project that we want to start doing today. And we are going to work on this project up to the end of November 2021. It's a six-month project. We are planning to find a place which we have already found where we can build a church building that is... Uh, safe for our operations that can also accommodate an equally good number of uh, believers who are coming to attend services. The buildings we are using right now, we are using three buildings together in a once. They are no longer sufficient. We have tried to use overflow buildings. They are also no longer enough and the other one received a structural uh, observation that it's no longer safe to accommodate as big a number as it used to in the previous years, roughly and basically because of aging. So we are realizing that when the COVID situation subsides, it will be impossible for us to have normal services at number 88. And it is because of that that we are embarking on a project to build a church structure. We are not planning to build a church. We are planning to build a church building, a church structure. A church is built by the word of God. A church building needs building materials. So we are going to build a venue from where we shall be eating our Passover.
We want to build a venue, an upper chamber, from where we shall be eating our Passover. The Passover, we have it already. And the preachers, they are there. The man with the pitcher of water, it is you. The good man, it is you. What we want to do is we want to use the man with the pitcher of water to find the good man so that we can, so that we can do what? We can build the church that we want to build. So we are going to have stage, two stages in the building of this structure. First of all, we want to build a temporary structure which can allow us to relocate. And then after phase one, we are going to build a, a big church. Right now, I do not talk about the big church uh, building which we want to build. We are talking about the temporary structure which we are going to build. Our expectation is that we are going to build a 5,000 seater structure so that we may start with a small structure so that we don't occupy the bigger piece of land that we have to save it for the bigger structure which we want to build. Our plan is that when this phase one project is complete, we are going to embark on a project to build uh, a, a structure that can accommodate around 15,000 people in the sec phase two of this building project. That's a good sign. So, Tudakuwa na peku jigira pasofa. Pasofa tinayo. Tutututa itenga. Tujuku itenga ya du tiri patiri. Nekuda kwe COVID asi. Tutu COVID kana ya pera. Tuwane paka kwiri na peku itenga tiri. Toro wa shedu tichenda. So we don't want to spend too much time with this project. It's an announcement that I'm making uh, for the first time on an official uh, platform. We want to build a temporary 5,000 seater structure on our piece of land so that we may be able to relocate from the hired properties we are using right now. If there is no other problem we have with those hired properties except that they are no longer big enough to accommodate us. I think those who have come to number 88, you know we use number 88, we use third floor, we use number 90, but still those buildings are not enough. So I am hoping that this message is going to be able to give you a proper understanding as to whether you can participate in this project, what does it mean for you or to you, and why would you want to participate? We are not going to give you the sweet nothing promises that you may have been used to when you used to attend false shrines. We will never do that. So the project um, requires you to work with your local assembly leadership or your regional leadership. As you can see right now on the screen, we have numbers of regional coordinators. We have regional coordinators in Australia, in Europe. We have Middle East. We have Southern Africa. We have South Africa. We have North America and so forth. So those that are in Zimbabwe, you can work with the finance here in Zimbabwe. Our leadership can help you. We are working on building a venue from where we can eat our Passover. So the project uh, has got a target, which I don't want to tell you. And I will not tell you how much we are expecting to raise for other reasons that may be obvious to others and not so obvious to others. But I can tell you that this is an instruction giving. We are instructing believers who want to participate 
that for a period of six months, starting from today, the 2nd of May, to the uh, 30th of November, 2021, uh, we are inviting believers who want to lose money for the sake of the gospel to raise an amount of $1,200 each um, until the end of the year. So we are not going to tell you how much you can raise every month. It's up to you. But what I want you to know is that serving God should never be something that you force yourself to. We have spoken about compulsion to a great deal of time this day. We don't want to do it again. But I don't want you also to look at yourself and say, do I afford to do it with my extra change after I'm done dealing with all that I usually take care of is my nominal expenses at the end of each month. You cannot put God in the list of your expenses. That would be a grave mistake. If you put your, your utility bills, your internet bills, your insurance bills, and you also put God in that list, you would have made a serious mistake. God cannot be an expense in your life. So when you decide to take part in this project, I want you to put that in your memory, in your mind. I cannot treat God as an expense. And number two, you should never see the work of God as something that you should look at after you have attended to everything else that is important to you in your day-to-day -day life. You know, saving God was something that was presented in a way in which those who actually saved God to his satisfaction, they had to reconstruct their manner of life so that they could make sure that their vocation towards God is unfettered and unaffected. They made sure my commitment towards God cannot be disturbed by anything. During the time of people's commitment towards God, they had to sacrifice other things that they were doing in their lives. So, we are not expecting you to say, okay, after doing everything that I usually do, I'm going to see if I can afford to give this amount of money within six months. I'm expecting you to ask yourself that do you feel convicted in your heart that this instruction is coming to you as a child of God to obey? If your answer is yes, then whatever tactics that you do with your pay slip or with your income, they are not a problem. Number one, uh, you, God will give you a heart that is going to be able to show you what you can and what you cannot work with in these six months where you are committed to the things of God. You are not usually with such a commitment. We have not yet had a project like this since the ministry started. This is something that we can call our first big project in the church. It's your first time to save God the correct way. It's your first time to bring money to God for the right motive, for the right reasons, and with the right understanding. I would uh, expect you to put your heart under the subjection of your spirit and say, my flesh cannot disturb me from seizing this opportunity to doing something that is eternal value in the house of my father. I would want to do everything I can to make sure that I, I, I obey my father. Even to those who naturally would not afford to commit $200 every month because six months, 1200 
you can save $200 every month. You can actually commit yourself that I am not going to depend on my usual income. I'm going to commit myself that from today onwards, I'm going to do something new to make sure that at the end of each month, I have $200 so that I can raise $1,200 at the end of uh, November 2021. So we are not talking to people who afford to do this project. We are talking to people who afford to obey God because God is going to help you open your heart, to open your mind, to show you avenues by which you can enterprise yourself to obey the word of God. So it requires faith also to obey God. And faith does not come by seeing your pay slip, by looking at your bank statements. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. If there is faith in you that this project is truly instructed of God, you can depend on God and he will give you means by which you can obey God in this project. And if you can afford to do more than that, if you can afford to raise more than 1,200 US dollars by the end of 30 November 2021, you cannot stop at this instruction because you don't know how much we are raising. You don't know whether everyone who is going to take part in this project is going to make the total number we want to have at the end of the year. We are encouraging you to make sure that you communicate with your regional coordinator. If you don't know who it is, ask your assembly coordinators. Communicate with your regional coordinator. Communicate with your regional coordinator. Make sure you, he has your contact details and make sure you also communicate with them of your commitment, how much are you going to be sending to them at the end of every month. Because we are not going to wait until November to start this project. At the end of May, we are going to start to do the construction of the things that we need to do on that property. So if you are going to be able to send your money at the end of each month, that project is going to continue to go forward. So this is the project called Project Church Building. Project Church Building. At this school, Bokunye Pera, Kutindakao na muru ya kanga ine nyangana, atishi Bokuma Abdazwa, atinanguwa yewe. Marizo, that you parry the eyes, those not passing by Kukutura Mariwe, to shant sa Mariwe, to work a building, Shokurama and Roparizo. Apana chumwe chishambu kuru kashino dari kazwa nda taura yuwe. Kutindiku taura kutanda taura na damreta kuseni. Apana. Ishe Jesu Christu ndia akati tuma kupariza. Ndia akati uzoti vanu. Vanu fanyiri wakuterira ishe. Pane shuhane nga achida. Kana watenda kuterira ikoko. Kuno prufa. Kuna mngari. Kutindaka tenda zuchokwadi. Saka dosha kaita project yashu. Kana ushukona kuunza a million uya nani. So I, I, I really believe that anyone who wants to save God uh, in this uh, project, you can do it. I was talking to the overseers a few days ago and I told them that Anyone, everyone who is in their right senses would not want to not be part of this project. I actually told them that myself, I am going to take part in this project. I don't think it would be safe for me to preach in a building that I don't know how it was constructed. <laughs> Unotsika nepa unotsikwa ne makwa ipapo kuti kana pachibaya unonzwao kuti pari kubaya kuti mangwana usadzoke ne ipapo haya kuno kuti makwa enda ine kuku ndi chanzenga mafeso aya ndienda nekuseru makwa yafudzwe nemtoyi wonye anofudza makwa ndi anenga ari kumberi panotsikwa nemfudzwe makwa 
ni makwa yanu tsika waipa saka tikuda kutotaura kuti munhu wese anenga achiti ane chacha da kuita mimba ya mwari anofani wakunzi wa kumutswa moyo kuzviita asa hazvisi zvekumbunyikidzana kungotaura zvadi chaita hangu ini meva anenge vachida kuteerera kuraira kwa mwari vano kuna kuteerera vanenge vasinganzi kuye vachisundwa aba manikidzwe sakare ga ndi mbonzi wa kuti vanhu vari kuti kudi eh tabeth are good thank you lord for the church structure convict me in the obedience to give the right way lord joshua says project church building prince chando says kutora mari ne hana yakachena zvisina ukopo kopo it's true madulini says chekone kwa taka chona kare cheshokura upenyu KT says thank god finally we had our own place to worship god e titus ari kuti hakuna double double you know hacho kwada hapana kana zviri kutoitika hapa hapa zvisina kukwana hapana chimwe chete kenneth says exciting project ahead i am very excited the baker says god knows our abilities hashtag #obedience Kennedy says we thank God for the project church building. Reverend Juliet says I am grateful to take part in the project church building. Peshi says obedience is better than sacrifice. Alex says no dameso ekona unosangana nane nechigubu che paraffin. I think he's talking about the man with the picture. <laughs> this one pastor. This one I'm sure I Alex, Alex, I go home. As no good jack and as you go to jump for a boss, I got a now as you go to jump for a fee. Rope ever for a good feeder. But another about is a little of woman also. Room bizarre with the cook which gear passing at no good a man. And to an argument, we thank God for the opportunity to obey him. Yes, thank you, Anthony. If you want to be an obedient child, then the father must give you an opportunity to prove that you are obedient. Then there are instructions. Tatenda, and thank you, Lord, for opportunity to offer services in the house of God. Biula says, Project Church Building, thank God for the opportunity to work in his house. Mary says, Tinofara Shukurne Project, Tinotenda Mwari. Itaya arikuti our own church building is sutino bakure to yani magumbeze tichirara ipapo tichidika pass over. Those are three to die shows. Tuna kushika kuzeni wangu machi zamura, tarara pano. Tazi kwa jiriku jiri wapane, panapo. And na admire an architect is here. We can assist with the designs. That's another way to minister. But at the moment we are still talking about money you can talk to the leaders to the overseers and i think they can take it from him from there nicholas says you sure apostle these are good tidings have been waiting for this michelle says we thank the lord for the opportunity all right we thank god i hope that we are blessed and i hope that we are going to um we are going to be joyfully running towards uh the project church building it's our church building and we are not going anywhere as long as the lord gives us strength the word shall continue to be preached so i want us to invite those that have not yet been saved to raise their hands wherever they are and repeat a confession after me say thank you lord i testify you believing with my heart that you are the son of the most high god and that you are the savior of my soul i am a sinner and i believe 
that you are able to save me from my sins. Because you died on the cross and you were raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, may you forever be exalted. This is a confession to salvation. We are inviting you to come and submit your name to the uh, relevant leadership so that you may uh, get information about baptism. Uh, we have our contact details. The Zimbabwe numbers are there. The regional numbers are there. If you are not in Zimbabwe, wherever you are, we have leadership in all the world. We have assemblies in almost every continent. So our leadership will talk to you and they will direct you as uh, concerning baptism programs because after doing the confession to salvation, you still need baptism of water and baptism of the Holy Spirit. We have come to the end of our service. I hope to meet with you on Wednesday. It's bye for now.